Thank you, Jesus, for confirming every word of yours. And we thank you for taking complete control of my mind, of my, of my mouth, of every word. And it is you who is speaking to us and teaching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. So is fear... A feeling, an emotion. Fear is a feeling. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's go to two Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. Two Timothy. Everyone can hear me. Yes. Mr. Jesse can hear me. Should I raise my voice a little more? Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Sister Helen, can you read? For God has not given us. For God has not given us. The spirit of fear. The um, emotion of fear. The spirit of fear. God has not given us the emotion of fear. Or the spirit of fear. What does the scripture say? Spirit. So fear is an emotion or a spirit? Spirit. Oh really? What does the scripture say? Read again. For God has not given us. For God has not given us. That means fear did not come from God. God has not given us. The spirit of fear. So if you have fear, do we have fear? Yeah? Sometimes. Sometimes? Who said? Fear of sickness, fear of uh, darkness, fear of people, fear of rejection, fear of death, fear of sickness. Fear of loneliness, fear of security, yes, fear of future, you have no fear at all, fear of virus, <laughs> yes, now this fear the Bible says it's a, it's a spirit and this spirit has not come from God. God has not given us the spirit of fear then but of power but of power and of love and of love and of a sound mind and of a sound, sound mind now everything that God has for us the only way to receive it is through faith yes did Jesus say that I have healed you or did he say your faith has healed you? He said your faith has healed you. Yes. And the Bible also says it is impossible to please God. Yeah, who's that? I can, I, I'm wondering and I, I'm seeing there, I can hear some voice from there. Okay, God said it is impossible to please God without faith. Now faith and fear, they both are opposite forces. Faith and fear both are opposite. Fear is also a spirit. Faith is also a spirit. Now how does a person get faith? How do you get faith? If you say believe, then I'll ask how do you get believed? If you say trust, and I'll ask how did you get trust? Give me two marks question. Two marks answer. How do you get faith? Spending time with God. More time with God. Spending time with God. Okay. Do you have any 
scriptural evidence? You have any scripture? How do you get faith? Everybody is so quiet. Okay, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Can you read? So then faith comes. So then faith comes. By hearing and hearing. By hearing and hearing. By the word of God. By the word of God. So how faith comes? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how fear comes? Who's that? So fear comes by not hearing the word of God? Fear comes when you hear any word that is contradicting to the word of God. How faith comes? Only by hearing or hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why it's two times hearing and hearing by the word of God? Why? Somebody said something. Okay. When somebody has gone to the doctor and the doctor has given a report, you have so and so sickness, so you will live only maximum for six months. Now, when that person has heard that, how many times the doctor said you have the sickness? Once. After that person has come out from the clinic, how many times that word is speaking to that person? <laughs> yes, is that word keeping, that we, that word is like, keep on speaking to that person? Day and night? Now, is he going to Google and check what are the symptoms? Yeah? What treatment, what symptom, what I should eat, what I should not eat, what is the cause, why it happened, how it came, how it... Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Now, we, that person is going to spend a lot of time in researching, studying, meditating about the sickness. Not only that, within few days, the person who is sick has more knowledge than the doctor. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. It, it looks like you are an expert about that sickness. Or you call the person who has the same sickness and discuss with that person. And so and so had, what did doctor say, what did you do, what did you eat? Now, when I spend more time with that word, is that word bringing fear? Yes. You would have heard it only once here. But how much time do we spend that word? How much time that word is talking to me? Even when you are on the bed, now that word is talking to you. Day and night. Day and night. And what is coming? Tears. Why? Fear. Now how did that fear come? By hearing. And by hearing the word of God not just one hearing in the same way how faith comes hearing and hearing by the word of God fear comes hearing and hearing by any word that is contradicting to the word of God When do you see this word fear 
for the first time in the Bible. Yes, Genesis. The book of Genesis, the third chapter, we say, <laughs> Adam said this word, I am afraid. Now we saw in 2 Timothy 1 7, what did we see? We saw that God has not given us the spirit of fear. fear. So when Adam, how did the devil come and attack Adam? Adam came, the devil came to uh, tempt Adam through words. He came and he spoke words. He gave him thoughts. What words did he give? He gave him words that is contradicting to the word that God spoke. How faith comes? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how fear comes? Fear comes by hearing any word that is contradicting to the word of God. So what did the devil do? God did not give Adam the spirit of fear. But all that Adam did was when he heard the words that is contradicting to what God spoke to him and when, be, when he believed that word, when he accepted that word, when he obeyed that word, when he acted on that word, that very moment he gave permission for the spirit of fear in his life. When Adam said, I am I am afraid, did he say? Yeah, he said for the first time. And God, God when, when God saw that, he did not see a fear, a feeling in him, but he saw a spirit that is operating in him. That's why God asked him, who told you? Because this spirit of fear cannot have access in your life without you giving the spirit permission. If there is fear in your life, it's not just an emotion, it's a spirit and how did you give access? Because when the devil came in a very subtle way and when he came with words and thoughts contradicting to what God has promised and when you believed it, what happened? That's the time we have given him access. So fear is not an emotion or a feeling, fear is a spirit. Are you understanding? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. When God created the world, did He create sickness? No. No. Did He create disease, poverty? No. God is a good God. And only good things came from God. Yes? Yes. But when Adam committed sin, a new law got activated. When Adam committed sin, a new law got activated. Now what is a law? Do we have the law of gravity? Yes. If I am going to drop this, is it going to go down or up? Down. down. When you drop? Down. down. So whether it's you or me, the result is the same. It's not that when you drop it goes down, when I drop it goes up. No. No matter which color, which religion, which community, which language, it doesn't. The law of gravity is the same for everyone. Correct? When you involve in it, the result is the same. Do we have electricity? Yes. Can we imagine how our life would be without the electricity? One day if there is no, no current, no power, how, how it would be? 
can't even imagine. Not one day, one hour I can't imagine. Yeah? The same electricity that is helping us in every way, can that same electricity kill someone if they don't understand or they don't use it in a proper way? Yes. In the same way, the kingdom of God works on a principle, on laws. The Bible is a book full of spiritual laws. Every word that God spoke is a law. That means when I apply that law, the result is the same. If I see in the Bible, somebody has got a miracle, it's not because God loves someone more and God doesn't love someone. No. If somebody somebody prayers was answered, it's not that God is favoring that person. No. That person has understood and applied the law and that person has got the result. If I also study and understand the same law, the same principle, and if I apply the same principle in my life, I also will get the same result. Are you getting it? So the Bible is a book full of laws. That's what we see in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law. Yes or no? Yes. Now, we all have to understand how God works, how God, how God's system works, how God makes decisions, how God moves, how He does things. It is predictable. If you understand the word of God, you understand the principles of God, if you understand the laws of God, you will know God. Because God is a God who is faithful to his word. For any reason he will not break his word or change his word or he will never alter his word. So can I predict, predict him? Yeah, I can, 100%. I know. Because I know God will not change his word for any cause. God will not change his laws for any cause. God will not change his system for any reason. Because God is a God who is faithful. Yes or no? Yes. If somebody is going to jump from the 10th floor, is God going to stop the law of gravity? That means every time we will be having a, like how we have power cut, we will have gravity cut. Because somebody or the other is going to jump from somewhere <coughs> or other, right? Will God change the law for somebody's error? No, he can't. Now, how did God create everything? He spoke words and He created. He spoke words and He created the world and He created the universe. Even the laws were established by His spoken word. How the laws are established? By His spoken word. How do we make decisions? Based on our emotions, right? Most of the time, Most of the time yes. Today, mommy's mood is good. We can <laughs> go and ask anything, we'll get. When her mood is not good, don't go anywhere close to her. Even if you do something right, you're going to get from her. Yes or no? Yeah. So how do we make decisions based on our emotions and our feelings? But God makes decisions based on His spoken word. He is not like us. That's where we go wrong. Sometimes our prayers are, we cry and we beg, we think because if God would, can see my tears, 
then he can change his heart god cannot change his heart because of your tears even before the bible says even when i was a sinner jesus died for me he took my sickness on the cross he loves you he is not waiting for you to cry and beg even before you 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 got the problem he has given the solution but the kingdom of god works on a principle the bible doesn't say my people are destroyed for lack of bread does the bible say that no, no. the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge all that we want is the knowledge of god's law god's word how his kingdom works god is a god who speaks words and that's how he created everything he established everything and god is a god who keeps his word who won't violate his word who won't change his word who won't alter his word for any cause or any reason that's why he chose to die but not change his word if death is the only way to save you and me he took that path he said i will die for you i will give my life away for you but i can't change my words for you because god is a faithful god i understand it. that's why there was no other way to save you and me but he had only one option to give his life and he gave his life for us because he can't break his word or violate his word when god said to adam the day you eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil you shall surely die now the moment god spoke those words those words are laws it's a law now when adam is going to go and eat god cannot go and reverse his words it's a law because god is faithful to the words that he has spoken the moment he spoke it it's a law when adam is going to go and eat it that very moment the law of death gets activated god cannot change or alter or reverse the words that he has spoken because god is faithful to his words are you getting it yes the moment adam disobeyed that very moment a new law a new law was established what is that law the law of sin and death the law of sin and death fear connects me to the law of sin and death god did not create sickness god did not create poverty god did not create evil it's because of the law of sin and death can you take romans chapter 8 verse 2 Romans chapter 8 verse 2 The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free had made me free from the law of sin and death from the law of sin, sin and death. death is it written yes so here in this verse we see 
two kinds of law. Yeah, can you read again? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Has made me free. Has made me free. From the law of sin and death. From the law of sin, sin, sin and death. death. Here we see two laws. One is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the other is the law of sin and death. When did this law of sin and death got activated? When Adam disobeyed. When he disobeyed. That very moment because God told him not to eat. If the day you eat you shall surely die. That's a law. Yes, what God spoke is a law. So when he disobeyed, that very moment the law of sin and death got activated. When that, when that law got activated, that was the time sickness, sin, Poverty, fear, worry, anger, all these things came into this world. That's what the, that was the time the land started to produce thorns. God did not create thorns. God created, when God's creation was perfect. God created us in such a way that our bodies can never be sick nor can we die. It's when the law of sin and death got activated, that was the time that our body started to get sickness and we started to physically, the spiritual death and then the consequences of the spiritual death was the physical death. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Are you understanding? Yes. Yes. But the good news is God is a just God. God is a God who is faithful to His word. God cannot change His word. Sin has to be punished. Sin has to be punished. For example, there is a judge who is a very just judge and now he is sitting at the judgment seat and his best friend has committed a crime. As a judge, is he going to pass judgment or is he going to say, you are my friend, I love you, so I forgive you? What shall he do? Not forgive? Yeah, if we forgive him, that he, that means there is no more justice in it. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. In the same way, God is a just God. At the same time, loving God. As a just God, sin has to be punished. He has to pass judgment. He cannot compromise on that. Can he? No. But, you know what the, the judge does? As a just judge, he passes judgment. As a loving God, he comes down from the judgment seat and takes the place of his friend and he tells, I am taking your place. That's what God did. As a just God, He passed judgment. But as a loving God, He became man. He came to this earth and He took our place. 
because that is the only way to save you and me. He is ready to lose everything and anything for you. Do you know how much He loves you? I have heard some parents saying, I, can, I will give anything, but I want my daughter to be saved. They would go and tell the doctor, Doctor, I will do anything. Even if I want to be in a place, I will be. As a parent, you can only say, but my God is a God who did it for us. He took our place. And death was the only way. That's why he took that. He chose to die. When Jesus came to this earth, his mission was not to heal the sick. His mission was not to do miracles. His mission was to go to the cross. That's why he came to this earth. He was born to be sacrificed. And he was prepared to be sacrificed. And on the cross, he paid the price for you and for me. And when he paid the price on the cross for you and me, and when he resurrected on the third day, a new law came into this world. You know what is that law? The law of life, the law of spirit, of life in Christ Jesus. The law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now can you read that scripture again? Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus for the law of life of spirit in Christ the law okay for the, for law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free will make me free has made me free will make me free has. will make me or has already made me has. has has made me free from the law of sin and death from the law of sin and death. All that sin and sickness and poverty and fear was the consequences of the law of sin and death. But the good news is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If that is true, then why is that still I'm I'm I am experiencing sickness even now? I'm experiencing fear even now. If Jesus took my sickness, why am I sick? If Jesus took my poverty, why am I poor? If Jesus took my fear, why do I still have fear? If Jesus took everything, why am I still living in this corrupted world yet? Why? Read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Read again. For unto us, for unto us was the gospel preached. Was the gospel preached. Preached. As well as unto them. As well as unto them. Who's this us and who's this them? Read again. For unto us 
was the gospel preached for unto us was the gospel preached is the gospel preached to you yes. that jesus died for you yes. that he took your sickness yes. that he took your sin yes. that he took your shame yes. that he took your curse yes. is it preached to you yes. did it profit you did it benefit you really yes yes or we are still living in the same old life read again for unto us was the gospel preached for unto us the gospel preached as well as unto them as well as unto them but the word preached but the word preached did not profit them did not profit them not being mixed with faith not them. being mixed with faith in them that heard it in them that heard it who's that them and who's that us can you read from the other translation for indeed we have had the good news of salvation for indeed we have had the good news of salvation preached to us preached to us just as the israelites also just as the israelites also when the good news of the promised land came <coughs> to them when the good news of the promised land came to them but the message that they heard but the message that they heard did not benefit them did not benefit them because it was not united with faith because it was not united with faith in god by those who heard by those who heard you know why because they heard it only in this year faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god are we hearing like this and leaving here when we go to church for mass after we hear once is that word speaking to us are we hearing and hearing from inside are we pondering on it meditating just like how that person had so and so sickness he was meditating he was researching he was going on google asking people or he studying on it examining it researching it now what is coming fear yes are we hearing about the virus researching about it getting more details about it yes now what is coming now when we hear the word of god are we meditating on it are we thinking about it are we examining about it are we researching about it are we pondering about it then you cannot have faith sorry to say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god the gospel was preached but it did not profit just like how it was preached to them it is preached to us who is that them the israelite people if you see in the old testament the old testament is the shadow of the reality the new testament When I am sitting here, will you go and talk to my shadow? No. The Old Testament is the shadow to show them what is going to come, the salvation. In the Old Testament, the gospel was preached to the Israel people. And what was the gospel preached? They all were slaves to the Egyptians. And the gospel was preached that God has a promised land for them. A land filled with milk and honey and everything that they need is already provided all that they have to do is to agree and enter into the promised land when they go in everything is already available 
Yes or no? Yes. But did they go? No. They all died in the wilderness. The next generation who never lived in Egypt, who lived in the wilderness, they entered the promised land. Not them. Except Joshua and Caleb. Was the gospel preached to them? Yes. Was the promised land given to them? Yes. But did it benefit them? No. Why? Because they did not mix the faith. Then the Israel people saw the Red Sea departing. Yeah. Did they saw manna falling from heaven? Did they see water coming out from the rock? Yes. yes. If you would see such miracles in your life, how will be your faith? Stand up. Strong. The presence of God like the pillar coming with you. How do you, how will be your faith? How will be your faith? Strong. Only you both are answering me. Others are thinking. How will be your faith? How will be your faith? Stronger. Huh? Stronger. It's the same it's the same thing with us. We always live to the devil. To sin. Now, now. By seeing signs and wonders and miracles, nobody's faith will increase. Faith comes only by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not by seeing signs and wonders. Maybe it will make you excited emotionally. Oh, wow. Yeah. I saw this happening. I saw that happening. I saw this miracle, I saw that miracle. But when problem comes, all that miracles will not help you. If that miracle is going to lead you to the word of God, and if you are going to spend time with the word of God, hear the word of God, speak the word of God, meditate the word of God, hear the voice of God, now that word of God will bring faith. Now that faith is what will bring you the result. You will never get faith by seeing miracles. In that case, that then the, the Israel people would have been the first people to enter into the promised land. No. They saw all those signs and wonders and miracles, but they did not mix their faith to what was preached because they only heard it. They did not, faith comes by hearing and hearing. They did not hear it from inside. It did not profit them. They came out of Egypt, but Egypt did not come out of them. God brought them out. In the same way, God has brought us out. But are we ready to come out? Are we ready to listen to the word? Meditate the word? If we do not mix our faith to what is preached, we can never experience the freedom that God has given to us. That's why Jesus never said, I have healed you. He always said, your faith has healed you. Faith connects me to the law of life in Christ Jesus. Fear connects me to the law of sin and death. Which law are you going to get involved in? It depends on which word are you going to allow in your life. Words are not just words. 
words are not just words words are spiritual things words connects us to the unseen world word of god connects us to his kingdom and any word that is contradicting to the word of god connects me to the kingdom of darkness Are you understanding? Yes. Now what did God do? He spoke words to Adam. What did the devil do? He came and he spoke words that is contradicting to the word of God. And that's why the law of sin and death got activated. But then Jesus died and a new law came. But now also you have the choice. because both the laws are still active in this world don't think that the the law of sin and death is gone no it's still active but which law am i going to get involved depends on which word am i going to obey and which word i'm going to allow to dominate me the choice is mine the gospel is preached but is it going to benefit me the kingdom of god works on a system i cannot violate that system praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus are you understanding the law of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death the only way to get connected to the law of life in christ jesus is through the word of god it's through the word of god that's why when i asked she told me how faith comes she said by praying by being in his presence when no your prayers will not work without faith and faith will not work without the word of god no one can get connected to god without his word because the book of john chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god and the 14th verse says that word has become flesh god and his word are the same yeah God and his word are same. If I have to know God, then I have to know his word. The Israel people, they were trying to know God through all those external things. They did not know God. But if you see Joshua, the Israel people, they did not want to hear the voice of God. They would tell Moses, Moses, you speak to him. and you tell us we don't want to hear his voice because they did not have any relationship with god they did not want to hear the word of god they want only miracles they only want water food shelter comfort they did not want any relationship but what about joshua when everybody is sleeping he is longing to hear the word of god the voice of god what are we seeking god for
we saw the two laws one is the law of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death now do we have the law of gravity yes when I put any object that goes towards the earth the earth pulls everything towards it yes because of the law of gravity in that case how is that a aeroplane can fly high how because it is weightless it's filled with air <laughs> she's saying yes then don't climb don't get into the airplane it's filled with air <laughs> is there law of gravity does everything is pulled towards the earth in that case how is that the flight can fly high Who's that? There is a force going against the law of gravity. Okay, there is, yeah, correct. There is another law called the law of thrust and lift. The law of thrust and lift. You know, when there is a hurricane, the wind, the pressure, can it lift a heavy object? Yes. So the pressure has the power to lift an object. Correct? Now the flight is designed in such a way, the wings of the flight is designed in such a way that when the flight goes on an extreme speed, the pressure that comes against the wings, what does it do? It lifts. Yes? Once it's lifted, then the engine keeps it flying. This is called the law of thrust and lift yes now the moment the law of thrust and lift has got activated that very moment the law of gravity has lost its power over it yes or no the aeroplane is down it cannot fly okay but the moment the aeroplane gets into the law of thrust and lift that very moment, the law of gravity, does it stop? Law of gravity stops? No. Law of gravity is still there, but it loses its power over the flight. Correct? In the same way, when a person gets into the law, of spirit of life in Christ Jesus that very moment the law of sin and death loses its power over that person both the law the law of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death is still in this world some people ask why is they are born like this why is this person having sickness why is that what don't ask that question why and why it's there is only one reason because of the law of sin and death all the sickness all the infirmity all the evil it all came because of the law of sin and death but there is a new law that has come that is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus now in the same way both the law the law of sin and death and the law of life in Christ Jesus is still in action and the reason for anything that is evil in this world is because of that law of sin and death but the good news is Jesus has taken that on the cross and a new law has come. That is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. 
Now the question is, am I going to be in the law of sin and death or am I going to get involved in the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus? The moment I get involved in the law of spirit of life Christ Jesus, that very moment the law of sin and death loses its power over my life. But the moment I come out from the law of life, spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that very moment by default I come under the law of sin and death. Now which law am I involved in? What desires? Which word I believe? Which word I am hearing? Which word I am meditating? Which word I am speaking? Those words are going to decide which law am I involved in. God's word? Or any word that is contradicting to the word of God? Faith or fear? Faith? But is that happening in our life? <laughs> when we hear the word when we believe the word not just hearing once now when we spend time in hearing it and when we keep speaking it that is the time we have just got into the aeroplane Okay, and then the flight is just taken off, and we have just gone up, and then comes a little turbulence and a storm. Now, what happens? The engine is put off, the aeroplane falls down like a stone. You know what it is? As long as I'm speaking the word of God. The law of sin and death has lost its power. But the moment little pressure comes, problem comes, situation comes, when I hear a bad news, am I immediately changing my words from faith to fear? That very moment, what I am doing, I am putting the engine off. Now is the damage less? No. Why it's uncertain? It all depends on you actually. On us. Yes. Either we fly yeah. or we fall. But all these days the devil was deceiving. Deceiving that it is God who has to decide. But praise God, the, the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us His promise. He has given us His word. He has given us His grace to help us. Yes? In the kingdom of God, you fall how many times? No problem. But the Lord is still waiting <coughs> to help you. When we study in school, when you don't write the exam, you fail, you retain in the same class. But in the kingdom of God, you fail how many times? God will give you the other chance, the next chance, the next chance, the next chance. But He will never throw you out from the school. Actually, it is not God who is doing all those things. It's we who allow the enemy when we believe those words. Uh, I will finish with an uh, uh, testimony and then we'll have dinner and then we'll continue. Have you heard a man called John G. Lake? 
anybody heard john g lake i think he is born somewhere in 1835 so discussing about john g lake you have heard about him okay have you heard about the plague yeah 1870 1870 okay this man john g lake he is not a doctor by profession and this john g lake he started to study the word of god and he started to see healings and he started to teach healing based on the word of god and he had healing rooms the people would come with sickness and he would teach them the word and they get healed and he had students they had to go and heal the sick if you see in the new testament after the resurrection of jesus jesus did not tell the disciples to go and pray for the sick he said to go and heal the sick in his name did peter and john go and he, when they saw the crippled man did they say jesus come and heal or they said get up and walk in the name of jesus so what are we praying the prayers in the new testament after the law of life law of spirit of life in christ jesus has changed now when john g lake started teaching he also sends his students to the sick people's house the students are not supposed to return back without the person getting healed no matter what is the condition you know why because for him the word is true when the word of god says when the believer lay hand on the sick the sick has to be healed the sick has to be healed if we, you are not seeing the result the problem is not with the scripture the problem is something else you practice it you apply it it has to happen if it's not happening practice again and again until you get the result but the result is for sure yes just like a mathematical calculation if you put the formula the answer has to be that you can't say no teacher for me the answer comes different and john ki lake um the healings that happen in his ministry the documented healings it's not just that person went and got healed they had medical report before they went they had a lump and after they went and got the word of god the lump disappeared they had a crooked bone and then they had the document that the bones became straight the documented healing was so much that the government of that country saw that statistically the people who go for his meetings the recovery is more than the sick people going to the hospital you know what happened government gave him medical license just imagine a man of god who 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 study the word not read the word who studied the word who understood the word who practiced the word could influence the country in such a way that the people get healed and the healings are documented that the government of the country has recognized him and gave him a medical license who don't know anything about medicine at that time there was a plague just like how now you are we are hearing about the virus everywhere at that time they were all scared maybe at that time it may not be so severe because thank god at that time they did not have media like how we have that's one good thing and this sickness was contagious and it was spreading through saliva 
And now, John G. Lake, people are dying. The doctors are treating them. And John G. Lake also is working with them. But all the doctors are wearing all kind of preventive measures. They are wearing the mask, the, you know, the gloves and they prevent themselves in such a way that they treat the patient with extreme yeah, with all that security and cautiousness and all the prevent, preventive measures. But John G. Lake doesn't, doesn't do anything. Because the Bible says for us, when the believer lay a hand on the sick, the Bible tells us to lay hand. The Bible doesn't say when you lay hand, the sickness will come on you. Did it say like that? <laughs> Is there any way they laid hand and then they got, then they died? No, they laid hand and the sick got healed. healed. This irritated the doctors. Why it irritated is they started talking to each other. They started saying, see, this is why you shouldn't give license to the one who is not educated. And when this was going among the, the doctors, that he doesn't understand. They felt like he doesn't understand the importance. He doesn't understand this. The, 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 you know, the intensity of the problem. And that's the time when John Hillay came to know, he wanted to show them the truth. And he tells them, take the saliva of the person and check it under the microscope. And when they checked it under the microscope, they saw all the germs were alive. And then he tells, give it to me and he puts his bare hand and he touches it and he tells them now check it under the microscope and when they checked it they saw that all the germs were dead you know why because Christ has redeemed us from the law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death yes that virus is poisonous when it touches you you will die but it is only for those who are under the law of sin and death the moment you get into the law of life in Christ Jesus that very moment the law of sin and death has lost its power over you are you understanding if that man could live in such a such faith operating in the law of life and Christ Jesus how are we supposed to live in this world just like others in fear are we supposed to live like the people in this world they have fear because they don't have the promise what we have they are living in torment because they don't know about the law of life in Christ Jesus but why should we live like them Christ has redeemed us from curse. Christ has redeemed us from sickness. Christ has taken everything on the cross. And there is a new law that has come. The law of life. The law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But the, you know, why was John G. Lake different? Because what he believed was not what he saw. He believed was what God promised. Because he did not just hear the word, because he was hearing and hearing. He was controlled by the word of God. That's why the government could recognize the healing that took place. Because he was operating in a different law. But why is that others could not see the same manifestation? Because we have taken the word of God for granted. We have not realized that the word is God himself. And we have not realized that this word, God will not lie. We read the book, it's like a, just a book. We, we will look at it as if a story book. We don't even know that it has life.
Please, Lord. When I saw John G. Lake and I heard about him, I said, Lord, if, if it happened in that time, 1870s, why not now? God has opened doors. I'm teaching for the doctors. Not just teaching, with signs and wonders. We were in, uh, two weeks ago, in, uh, uh, I was in KK and we were teaching for the nurses. One month ago, I was in Sri Lanka and I was teaching for the doctors. Not now, I've been teaching them for past two years. And who are the doctors, you know? That these doctors are the head of the departments, the consultants. And then are Christians. In the beginning, it was challenging for me. I did not know how to go and speak to them. But then, when they saw the signs and wonders, now, they learned how to heal the sick through the word of God. Every time I go, they bring cases. And they ask how to heal them through the word. And they are learning how to do. Because they see that the healing that happens through the word of God is much, 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 100% perfect comparing to the medical healing. But only if we learn, practice, understand and operate the law of life in Christ Jesus. And the only way to get connected to the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is through the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, we'll take a small break and then we can come back. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for feeding us with your word, with your spiritual food. And we, are th we thank you for the physical food that you have given us that nourishes our body. We thank you, Jesus, for opening our spiritual eyes. That from today, we no longer live under the law of sin and death. But we study your word, we hear your word. And activate the law of life in Christ Jesus. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.